Now you have another big time superstar in Giannis, who, oh, by the way, already won a championship with the Milwaukee Bucks. So now it's, I'm going to wait and see. I'm not going to sign the extension just yet until you convince me that you're putting together a title contending team. This is the NBA. The players drive the league, man. I mean, when you hear something like this, does it kind of turn you off? You're talking about a two-time MVP. I believe he's, you can clarify this, he's in the third year, third season of a five-year, 228 super max deal, and already he's making demands. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think a few years ago, Giannis made a statement about wanting to spend his entire career in Milwaukee, and I just laughed at him. Like, he's he's young. Talk to me in a few years. That'll, sure. that'll all change, especially when you see your peers teaming up with each other and building these super teams, right? But Giannis has to be honest. And I mean, even with the Dame situation in Portland, right? These guys in these markets like Portland and Milwaukee, you're putting these demands on a franchise and they're not, they don't have the infrastructure to take that on. Who is Milwaukee getting free agent wise to build the championship team? As far as I'm concerned, they've reached their ceiling. They've done the best that they could do for a franchise, for a market like Milwaukee. You win a championship. To me, you got to be happy with that. Like Drew Holiday is what? early 30s, pushing mm -hmm. mid-30s. Chris mm -hmm. Middleton's getting up there. Brooke Lopez. These are three of your main supporting guys getting up there in age. I think they've reached their peak. I mean, this might be their final year of really being a true competitor in the Eastern Conference in the NBA. And so after that, what do you have? You're looking at a rebuild situation because Milwaukee is not a free agent destination. So it's funny to me when I hear these demands from guys in certain markets because what do you expect this front office to do? So pretty much you're already just putting out there. I'm He's going to leave. He's not staying in Milwaukee. This is just for me, a filler, like a warm up to what's coming and not trying to put it all on Giannis. We put it on the franchise. They're not, I put it out there. I'm putting these demands out there. Same thing with Damon Portland, right? I want to see if they can put a contender together. Be honest with yourself. They're not doing that in Portland. So it's yeah. just, that's how it, it's just funny to me. So a couple of things. This is a team that was a top seed last year in the Eastern Conference. They won 58 games. The Celtics were right there in 57 wins, 57 to 25. The Bucks were 58 and 24. We already talked about it. A couple of seasons removed from winning a title. Um, so something that stood out, and I, I know what you're going to say, but I want to hear it anyway. Then why sign these deals? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. And, and what, when did we get to this point now where, I'm signing a super max contract and then a year or two, I, I don't like what I see. I don't like the direction of the franchise or, you know, it, it reminds me when you're a young kid and your buddy down the street, little Joey, little Jimmy, whoever gets the bicycle and then you get the bicycle and then they turn around and they want to get a better bicycle because of what you got or vice versa. It's like this jealousy factor. First of all, Why'd you sign the contract then if you knew this is where we were heading? Correct, number one. And then number two, when did we get to this point in the NBA where the players dictate the league and where they're going to go as much as they do right now? Because it's beyond prevalent. Uh, it, it, and you want to say it started with LeBron a couple years ago? Whatever, but I just, how did we get here? Well, number one, it'd be hard to turn down that Supermax money. These guys are 100%. making money. These guys Perfect. are making bank, but it gives you opportunity to play both sides of the field, right? Bradley Bill with Washington, right? You can sign that super max deal with no pressure, no expectations, put all the pressure on the front office, knowing, knowing if you're honest with yourself, this front office has no chance at developing a roster that you want or at least in the time frame that you wanted to. So for me, guys like Dame and Bradley Bill and Giannis, they can play it both ways, right? Like they can play it both ways. They can make it seem like the front office didn't do this. They're the reason why I'm not here. Oh, I'm gonna get my cake too. So that's how I look at so it. So can you end can you can by 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 that rationale, okay? Then can the league down the road come up with, hey man, no more super max deals? Because guys are gonna guys are gonna get their coin early on, right? And then they're gonna be looking down at the end of the bar, they're with the blonde, and a brunette walks in, they want the brunette, they want a bolt. That's just how it is. So how do we avoid this? I honestly. I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer. <laughs> I, I think it's so far gone at this point. You see these contracts? I mean, these deals that, Ridiculous. I mean, it, it's, and it's only going to increase and increase. I mean, you see what guys like Therese Halliburton, the money that they're making. So if, if a guy like that is making that much, if I'm Luca, if I'm, if I'm Giannis, like, come on, 
So as long as look, Therese Halliburton is a great player. And these other guys, I mean, the money they're getting, like these are great players, make no mistake about it. But if I'm going to the negotiation table, like I'm Giannis, I'm Luca, this is what such and such is making. I I gotta, I gotta get way more than that. So to me, that's how I look at it. Like if 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 B list players are getting certain this this much, right? What are the A listers going to say, right? That's how that's how I got to look at it. So it starts to me. It starts with what are the B listers making? <laughs> that's the issue. If the B lister so, is getting two hundred million, the A listers demanding three fifty. So take a guy like Austin Reeves. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right? I mean, is he a hundred million dollar player? I don't think he is right. I I haven't seen enough. They're based in, they the Lakers are basing that off of potential, right? And that's what you have to do sometimes. The NBA is so much of a potential league when it comes to drafting and signing these guys. They're projecting out to what Austin Reeves could be or what they hope he is, right? I mean, they have no other choice. Who is who's their third option right now? Well, that's the thing, yeah. So a lot of these teams they have no they have no other option. They have to pay this money. It's 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 ludicrous because you can average ten points a game and play. 25 minutes a night and you can make a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. They, they keep reset. The players keep resetting the market as opposed to the NFL where the quarterback can set the market, but for the quarterback, not right. for the pass rusher, not for the corner, not for the running back, not for the wide receiver in the NBA. It's a friggin' free for all. We yeah. don't care if you're a point guard, a power forward, a two guard shooting right. guard, playmaker center. When the market's reset, the market's reset. Everyone, exactly. yeah, it's like a big tote jar. Everyone pulls from it and they're cashing in. The dynamic of those two sports lend to it as well, right? With with football, the quarterback on every level is the main person, right? Like that's Touch the ball the most. Right. When it comes to basketball, you can have two, three dynamic guys. That's all you need. You can go over to the top. And so I think the individual nature of basketball, having those individual talents and how it's so important, whereas football, it's so much of a unit. And you have to develop that depth, right? Yep. yep. Um, I think just the simple nature of football and even in basketball, look, the guys, the faces are more recognizable too. So there's more power to these to these guys' faces, right? Yeah. Um, the casual sports fan could probably name. Would you say they can name more star NBA players than star NFL players outside of quarterbacks, right? Like they can name you a Steph, a KD, a yeah. Giannis, a Luca, a Wimby, right? But the NFL. When it comes to the next big thing coming in outside of Caleb Williams from USC, they probably can't name. Yeah. The NBA has this foreign element too when it comes to, you know, promoting individual yep. guys. Yep. So um, there's such a different dynamic when it comes to those two sports.